can do the arm either in supine or sitting. It really won't make much of a difference. Um, for knee extensors, the appropriate way to do it is in side line if you can get there. So I'll have you do the side line. picture because you're breaking up the tone by having a hip flex. Okay, so you might feel two different things if you do it in sideline versus sitting. Um, and then plantar flexors, you would be on your back. And you're just going to just going to go one one second. But mostly with someone who has actual spasticity, I get a lot of threes and fours with plantar flexors. It's already a really stiff muscle, um, so you'll just be cranking on it and not be able to get much movement. When that happens, this is a joint that I would take a goniometer to. Okay? I know that we don't always use it a lot in neuro, but you would want to use it um, on your ankles because you need ankle motion and strength to, for normal gait mechanics. So I think it's a really important one to take a measurement. So. Let's go down the list here. You guys have the right number, or it's letter C, finger to nose. <laughs> yeah. So um, I need your arms out like this. And you're going to take your index finger and touch the tip of your nose. And I usually demonstrate it first for the patient. And what are we looking for here? So if Janie starts moving like that, we say she has dysmetria, right? Exactly. If someone, I know this is a big question in our class from the fall. We love our class from the fall, but we're just, we know there's a lot of questions on this. How many times do you do it? Well, if Janie starts, what show one? You're poking your eye? Yeah, I wouldn't do that 10 times, right? Because sometimes you guys were taught, or I know previously, you know, they needed to do it like 10 times. But she's going to poke her eye out. I get, the, I get the gist of it, that she's got this feature, right? And then I think you can describe it minimally, moderately, right? Severe, left versus right side, you know, any of that kind of stuff. But, you know, use your judgment. Your, clinic, your um, you know, good sense of judgment. You know? All right. Um, finger to therapist finger. So um, this is where you're going to go, this finger, <laughs> yeah. so she's going to go with her index finger to my uh, index finger, right? And I'm going to move in different directions, just finger to finger, all right. And again, you're looking for dysmetria. Um, and then finger to finger is help shoulder drive that to the 90, right? I'll look extended, and you're going to bring both hands toward midline, and I don't do this one. Approximate index to the four I don't do this one, but that is uh, what they call uh, finger to finger, right? Um, alternate finger or nose to finger. This is one. So she's going to go to her nose and to my finger, right? Her nose and my finger. And again, I'm looking for how accurate she is and what kind of calf she's taking with her finger, right? The other thing you're looking for with this is um, you're kind of doing a quick visual assessment. So you want to not just do one, because you definitely want to do this one because there's no real vision required. Uh, moving the finger pads, right? Up, opposing each of the finger pads. Sometimes you'll see patients do this because they think they're so smart and they've done this so many times. But you want to say, slow down. Are you able to just do it once? and see if they can control that impulsivity or if it's really maybe a tremor coming in. And I always do it again on the non-affected side, right? You want to make sure that they're understanding what you want them to do and that they can do it on the non-affected side. Um, mass, grass, um, alternation is made to end on the closing of this one. It's just a steamer drive to the There you go, mass, grass. Uh, prone 
supination, supination. Elbows are going to be flexed to 90. you got to hold them close to your body and go on back and forth. I know if any of you guys do Fugelmeyer, this is like one of the tests, and then this is harder out here. It's just um, out of synergy. So, well, it's just, I'm just giving it a little. That's a good question. What's this called? I wrote it on the board on Monday. I don't use this one, but uh, okay. You always put this in the back of the Yeah, I think that's the only way to put Yeah, it says elbow flexion here. Okay. It says many other muscle groups can be tested for the spinalum, but such as shoulder abduction abductors or flexors, elbow extensors, and so forth, but I protect they don't use it, so, but, right. Um, tapping with a hand. Well, when the patient is asked to tap, um, with a hand on the knee. There you go. Tapping. So, if it was like this, what would you put? It's hard. <laughs> comment on the speed, right? It's more than likely like a right impairment. Impaired speed on the right. Or yeah. tapping the foot. This is asked to tap the ball of one foot on the floor without raising the knee. Feel me in contact with the floor. Again, making sure the mat or the mat that they're sitting on is um, low enough so they get their feet on the floor. Sometimes I even alternate up and uh, Yeah. You can alternate to make it a little harder. You know, one the ball of one foot with the heel of the other. Um, that might be coming up later, sorry. Um, I'm just trying to go through this. Um, pointing and pass point. Do you use this one? Patient therapist or opposite. Yeah, do you want to do this one? Both the patient therapist bring shoulders to a horizontal position and then you're going to get Pointing and pass pointing, you use this a lot. With, you will use this sometimes with your vestibular patients. You have you as a therapist start out with the patient and you raise your arms up, and then you're supposed to come back together, and the patient may be off 90 degrees. So if they can realign with their starting position. I didn't work as much with the stable location, so that's, that's good. Thank you. Alternate heel to knee. Um, you want to get on your back. They oh. say back. I need to do it seated. I know in the book it says it's a fine position. I tend to do it seated, but um, you ask the patient to take the heel of, say, the right foot, bring it up yep, to the knee, and slide it down. So what you're looking for again is so like the finger to nose, you're looking for dyspetria, right? How accurate is she with um, <coughs> moving her heel um, up and down? You're also kind of testing proprioception here, um, kinesthesia. I have a patient, well, she has dysmetria, but also she can't do that unless she's looking at it. So she'll do like this while she's doing it so she can see what her foot's doing. 